thought I'd give you a quick rundown on our um, some of the tips and tricks that we've found through owning the JK and um, also maybe um, some of the mods that we've done as well. So um, in terms of electrical stuff inside, uh, we've just recently added the outlets, so a double pole, double power point there. We've added one just here. We've got an outlet to the outside as well. Here. So, conveniently located next to the kitchen if you want to run any other appliances on 240. So I've obviously got the water pump switch here as well just so that you can have it uh, I like to isolate the, the pressure in the system when you're not using the sink and stuff so basically you use the sink and then switch off the power to the pump so that um, yeah, it's always on ended up saving a bit of cash um, mounting all the components and then just got the sparky to wire it all up and uh, certify it all so it's all uh, Legit runs down on power point, and um, I think they charged me th maybe 300 bucks to wire it all up. And and um, yeah, connect it all up. It's um, the inlet obviously where it's plugged in 15 amps, and there's my battery charger. So the battery charger is just ch plugged into this uh, socket um, and uh, yeah but um at a powered site that means we'll be topping up the batteries or trickle charging them uh, at the moment I just got the uh, I actually replaced the old VSR because I thought it was a bit a bit clunky but um just bought this one from JCar and that seems to be a lot better than the factory one so um the factory one was like turning on and off quite regularly i don't know why but this one is way better i will eventually go a little spot for it to um to have a dc dc charger just mounted here um they charge better and um usually have solar inputs as well so you can mount a solar input um outside and have your solar hooked up to it um i also made this little board here and carpeted it just um, a bit of marine ply um, I also made it so I can just easily unplug the charger take those couple of screw few screws out and then I actually can just utilize that in the shed or, or whatever but I probably won't be taking it out but I thought it might be worthwhile just in case um, just thought I'd mention as well um, all the if you're looking at buying the components or Looking into it, everything's got to be double pole power points and components. So most of the household stuff is single pole. Caravans and camper trailers and all that have to be double pole. So something to look out for if you need to to buy it. Also, um, this marine ply that I carpeted, the way I installed that was just with um, some Sikaflex underneath. And I made a couple of brackets just to um, attach it, just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. But honestly, that sticker flex is so good, it's held that well. So um, I don't think it's going anywhere, especially with those brackets as well. So, fridge compartment wise, um, we added the uh, Anderson plug connector. The, um, the original cigarette lighter is quite a joke in my opinion. Just wriggles loose, and your fridge gets power, power, and then turns off, and loose connectors and stuff. The Anderson plug had no dramas with. I think we had this for the first, maybe like two trips, and we had issues with the cigarette lighter plug. And we added a um, 15 volt inlet as well. So lucky enough to have 15 amps in the shed and that definitely helps out with um, powered sites 
So as far as our electrical compartment goes, um, that's the 240 volt uh, RCBO, which is you're gonna have the 240. Um, I replaced I replaced the old fuse section here um, because we do a fair few corrugated roads and stuff and some rough beach roads and uh, we found that yeah the cylinder fuses were, were stuffing out on us so I ended up going to the fuse the fuse block instead so to give you an idea of what happened is we had these are the old ones that used to go roughly about there there and there and um it has these little crimped on spade terminals so that's the one that's broken but this is the one that's what it should look like so um these things rattle loose and give you a really bad connection so what will happen what was happening is that out of all these circuit switches here the fridge one would be on but it would be um, sort of the light switch would be coming on and off depending if you push the panel so that was obviously because it wasn't contacting quite here then when you push the panel it would contact and make us make the circuit I, f I found a nice nice way to get around that um, something you can just take with you just in case it happens so a quick fix would be to get one of these so this is just a um, just normal blade fuse essentially you would isolate the circuit make sure there's no power pull the fuse panel out then on the back of this you would take the two female um, connectors off and you would connect this in there so we also have the battery monitor so that um, gives us a bit of an idea on how what battery percentage what's going in what's going out so um, yeah that's pretty handy but these days you probably just get a Bluetooth one Bluetooth ones probably work better you can just connect it to your phone so um, water outlet wise I ended up making a uh, T-section and having another water outlet um, over the other side um, so that's obviously where the factory water pump is and then that comes out into a T which I'm all this stuff is a uh, John Guest so really recommend highly the John Guest stuff I think it's used quite a lot in caravans um, so that's obviously the original outlet for um, the sink and that and then I just teed off that and then just ran just up to here and then obviously along this rail try to keep it away from that inlet as far as much as I could just 240 volt stuff and then went out through a um, bulkhead connector sealed up nicely through the back and then I uh, Go out the back. Might be a bit hard to see, but that's where it comes out and connects and goes straight down there to here. So, um, just made a little bracket, mounted that, and then uh, I have another outlet here. Obviously, it's pretty far away from that it's not gonna get wet it's down low as well so um I just pumped it up to waterproof the whole roof um, I did to the old one so this is a new one we got um, replacement from Jayco because the last one um, broke <laughs> so hence the reason why I'll show you what happened so this, um, these little zips that are held by the zip tie, what happened with our one is the zip tie came, well broke off, and the zip um, 
undid and then the inner tube ended up bursting out of the side of where the unzip part was and and blowing up so um, I was lucky enough to um, just isolate this one section with these valves on either end and pumping up the rest of the thing and just having a just supporting this this tube one thing to note as well is um, I usually use the Milwaukee um, air blower it doesn't have a lot of pressure so it probably goes up maybe halfway maybe a bit more and then I just switch to the pump but also the pump has the gauge and it also tells you in the green is where you gotta gotta be so um, folding up the NX wise um, the quickest and easiest way I find is that that's essentially how it would come out uh, how it would look when you're uh, it's attached to the camera trail obviously that side's unzipped like flat directly down on the ground and that's how it would look on the ground so now I just basically try and fold all the loose ends into that section of where the roof is and then fold that into thirds and then roll it up and that's probably the quickest and easiest way I found that way when you go to unpack it the next time you put it at that side where you've rolled it up unpack it and then you roll it across here and it's basically ready just to fold out right where you next to your camper trail so I might just do a quick video on that tips and tricks I can think of for now but um hopefully you yeah, got something out of that hopefully we see some more on J-Tracks on the uh on the camping trips that'd be nice see you guys